Hi, first grade. Hello, first grade. This is Mrs. Conda. And Mr. DeStefano. And we are here with a new listen and learn lesson. Today, we're going to be learning about the animals of the saltwater habitat. As always, we miss you so much, first grade. It is not the same teaching listen and learn without you. So just like last time when we talked about the freshwater habitat, as we learn about the saltwater habitat today, we are again, again um, going to be reading a text that is nonfiction. Nonfiction means that it's not fake, it's real. Nonfiction text teach, inform, and explain real things. We've talked about this many times before. They often, but not always, have real photographs. We're gonna see a lot of real photographs today during our lesson. And we get to look at the ocean. We do, and you, we all know how much Mrs. Kanda loves the ocean. All right, but before we go any further, we're gonna hop into some vocabulary. So the first vocabulary word is the word plankton. You may have heard this word if you watch SpongeBob. But plankton are very small animals or plants that drift in salt or fresh water. And if you uh, take a look, you can see a little picture of some plankton. The blue water whale eats a type of animal plankton called krill. In our next word, we've had this word before. If you remember when we were back at school, we, the word is valleys. Valleys are lowlands between two areas of highlands. So remember we made the V with our hands in, cla in class and that part, um, the, the bottom area there is, is the valley. So our sentence says rivers usually flow in the valleys between two mountains. Oops, I'm moving things around. <laughs> All right, our next word is the word regeneration. This is the process of regrowing a body part, like a limb, like an arm or a leg, or an organ, like your heart. Um, so the sentence starter is, or not sentence starter, the sentence is, if one of the starfish's arms is cut off, the starfish grows a new arm through a process of regeneration. So be mindful that a starfish is different. If, you, um, if a starfish loses an arm, they can regenerate that, but if a human loses an arm, they cannot regenerate that. So just be mindful of that. And our next word is slopes. The word slopes means it inclines or is it, it or it is at, if it slopes, it means it inclines or it is at an angle. So a hill that slopes downward is good for sledding. I'm going to ask Mrs. Kunda to go back to the valleys picture for a second because I think yeah. if you look at the side of the valley, um, the side of the mountain there or a hill there, um, you notice how it slopes downward. So if that were covered with, with snow, that would be good for sledding. Um, it really would, it'd be perfect. So you can see the slope there um, right before the valley. And our last vocabulary word for today is the word shallow. So if something is shallow, it's not deep. So uh, for example, if you take a look at the sentence at the bottom, he swam in the shallow end of the pool because he was just learning how to swim. So that means or that is shallow. All right, and as always, we're gonna have a journal response today. So we really want you to turn your listening ears on as we're reading today, because we want you to answer this question. What are three things you learned about a saltwater habitat? So really listen closely and listen for some new things that you've learned about a saltwater habitat. We cannot wait to hear it. And um, if you need a sentence starter, take a look at the screen. Um, in red, we have, I learned. Um, and you can use that as a sentence starter if you need one. Okay, welcome to the last habitat we are going to explore. I'm kind of sad that it's the last one because I've enjoyed this unit. I know, me too. In the last read aloud, we explored freshwater habitats. Now we're going to learn about another kind of water ha habitat, a saltwater habitat. Saltwater habitats, as you can guess from their name, contain lots of salt. This means that we can't use salt water for drinking. Would you like to drink a cup of salty water? No thanks. It's hard to imagine, but more of the earth is covered in water than is covered with land. Most of the water is salt water in oceans and seas. Oceans are huge areas of salt water that stretch all around our planet and they are home to almost half of the world's species of animals. 
and millions of different plants. The water in the ocean comes from rain, as well as from rivers and streams that flow into the ocean. Seas are smaller areas of salt water that have land all around them or around part of them. So more of the water is, or more of the earth is made of out of water than land. So there's more water than land, and then more of the water on the earth is salt water than fresh water. That's pretty cool. So here we go. Um, I've come to the largest ocean, the Pacific, to show you a bit more about ocean habitats and the plants and animals that live in them. I'm standing on a beach looking out at the water. You can see the waves are crashing onto the beach. This beach and any land that runs alongside the ocean is called the coastline or shoreline. Now you may think that when you are standing on the land looking at the water, that the land stops where the water starts. It certainly looks that way. But let me get my trusty scuba gear out and walk into the water. Now that I'm here, I'm standing on land. It's just that the land is under the water. The land slopes downward the farther I go. So remember that means it has an incline that goes down. So the land slopes down the farther I go out into the water, which means the water is getting deeper and deeper. So you might notice that if you, um, when, you know, when we go, to, if you go to the beach, you might start out at the shallow end. Um, that's where you walk in, and as you, go, as you um, walk further into the water, the water gets deeper and deeper. You know, just to go back a little bit, Mr. Stefano, I thought it was really interesting that you said that the largest ocean is the Pacific. So that's a really good fact to remember first grade, that the Pacific Ocean is the yep. largest ocean. Yep, that might be something somebody might want to write about is the new fact that they learned today. It certainly would be. I mean, especially since we have five major oceans and the Pacific is the largest one. So that's, that's a pretty important fact. All right, speaking of important facts, here's some more. The interesting thing about the ocean floor, which is the land underneath the ocean water, is that it isn't flat. As on land, the earth beneath the ocean waters has both mountains and valleys. This makes some areas of the water in the ocean deeper than others. Wait a minute, so that means there's mountains under the ocean? Yeah, there are. What an awesome fact. And there's valleys under the ocean. My goodness, who knew? That is so interesting. The Pacific Ocean is full of both plant and animal life, but not all of them share the same space. The conditions under the water are very different in various places. Some parts are deep and some are shallow. There are cool parts and there are warm parts. Some are very dark and some are full of life, or light. <laughs> it's all full of light, but it's, some are full of light. <laughs> there are plants and animals in nearly every part of the ocean. Some in the deep open waters far from the land and some in the shallow waters closer to the shore. Some animals like turtles, jellyfish and crabs live closer to the shore where it's shallower and warmer. Some animals like it better near the surface of the water and others prefer to live down at the very bottom of the ocean on the deep ocean floor. They have all had to adapt to the conditions of their habitats. For instance, the animals that live in the deeper parts of the ocean have had to adapt to total darkness because the sun's light just can't reach that deep. Some fish, like the devil fish, have very large mouths and sharp teeth so that they can catch their prey as easily as possible. Other sea creatures have feelers on their bodies that help them feel where their food is. And some animals make their own light with special chemicals in their body, like when you carry a flashlight in the dark. Wow, so some animals carry their own little personal flashlight, how cool. Yeah, it's a way they can adapt because the, the light from the sun just doesn't go deep into the ocean. So, they, so that's how they adapt. And then the other animals, they have feelers that help them to feel for the food that they want to eat. Wow, what a wonderful way to help them survive. All right, this is a special place, place in the ocean. I have now arrived at a special part of the saltwater habitat called the coral reef, or a coral reef, which is made up of many tiny animals called corals. 
corals stay in one place all their adult lives. They have stomachs and mouths and even skeletons. These skeletons can be on the inside or the outside of the coral animals and are also called coral. When the coral animal dies, its skeleton remains in its place and other cor an coral animals will come and live on top of the old skeletons. The colony in which the coral lives is called a coral reef. I'm here in the Pacific Ocean at a coral reef. In addition to the coral, there are many other kinds of animals around a reef. I found everything from fish and shellfish to octopi and sharks to snails and turtles. Here is an animal that lies in and around this coral reef and whose name most of you can probably guess based on its shape. It's a starfish. This starfish, also known as a sea star, has five arms, which make it look like a star. Although it's called a starfish, it's not actually a fish. It belongs to a group of animals that have a spiny, excuse me, that have a spiny skin all over their bodies. If I touch the starfish, I can feel that, that, that its body is covered with tiny hard bumps that help to protect it from predators, such as sharks, manta rays, and other fish. Starfish are also able to protect themselves in another amazing way. If another animal actually catches and bites off one of the starfish's arms, the starfish will not die, and it can still escape. In time, a new arm will grow back to replace the missing arm. When an animal regrows a missing body part, this is called regeneration. So that's very interesting. So if it's if his arm gets um, part of its arm gets um, taken away by another animal, it will actually grow a new one. And also the bumps on the starfish help to protect it from other animals um, that might want to attack it. Wow, just another adaptation that these animals have. The starfish doesn't swim. It crawls very slowly along the ocean floor using hundreds of tiny tube feet. These feet attach to whatever the starfish is crawling over. As it crawls along the floor, the starfish is always on the lookout for food. This starship's prey includes fish, snails, clams, oysters, and crabs. So as Mrs. Kunda told, told us, the starfish is not actually a fish, so it doesn't swim around like a fish would. It has all those hundreds of tiny tube feet that let it crawl on the ocean floor. Yes, and I think that's a, another reason why they began calling it a sea star, because people commonly mistake the starfish for a, a fish because it has fish in its name. So people um, nowadays typically refer to it as a sea star. Yeah, and if we look at the starfish, we don't see fins on it, we don't see gills, no. um, you know, so that, that's probably why they decided to start calling it a sea star, like Mrs. Kunda said. Here's another animal that lives in salt water. This shellfish is called a lobster. Lobsters live on the ocean floor in openings between rocks. Their hard shell stops most other animals from trying to eat them. So that's a way that they've adapted to survive. They have that hard shell so that the animals um, have a difficult time trying to eat them. Lobsters have many legs that they use for crawling about. And they have antenna on their head to feel their way around the murky ocean floor. I have to watch out for that lobster's claws. They are called pinchers and they are very strong. The lobster uses them to defend itself against prey and to catch and crush its own food. Lobsters are carnivores. They eat fish, worms, and other shellfish. I'm gonna move out of the way of this lobster before I get squeezed. So what's a carnivore again, everybody? So a carnivore is an animal that eats other animals. So now here's the hammerhead shark. Looks like I've moved right into the path of another predator. This is a hammerhead shark. If you take a look, you can see how the hammerhead got its name. Its head is very thick and it looks like a hammer from above with an eye and a nostril on each end. The hammerhead shark is a large fish 
growing up to 20 feet long and weighing over 500 pounds. That's the same weight as 10 first graders. Hammerheads like to live in warm waters, so they are mostly found near the coast where the waters are shallow and warmer. Sharks are carnivores. The hammerhead's favorite food is a fish called a ray, but it also likes to eat octopus, um, lobsters, crab, and fish, including other sharks. Most sharks have smooth and slender bodies, which help them to swim very fast. Their mouths are full of sharp teeth to help them to catch their prey. Let's go back up to the surface. There's a sea animal I'm sure you'll want to see, but we have to travel farther out. We have to travel farther out to sea, away from the coral reef and into the deep water to see it. This amazing creature is the biggest animal in the world. It's a blue whale. Blue whales have blue-gray skin and are covered in a layer of blubber that help keep them warm in the frigid ocean depths. So that blubber keeps them warm. I think we read about that um, in one of our Listen, Learn. We did, yes, with the Arctic whales. animals. Yes. Blue whales are so big that they can weigh as much as 25 elephants. In fact, blue whales are the biggest animals known to have lived on Earth, even bigger than dinosaurs. Wow. Wow, that's a really great fact, though, to walk away from or, or this lesson with, that, you know, the blue whales are the biggest animal on Earth. Bigger than dinosaurs. The blue whale spends all its time living in the deep water. But unlike fish, it can't breathe underwater because it does not have gills. It needs to breathe air just like we do. The blue whale can hold its breath and stay underwater for as long as 30 minutes before eventually coming up for air. Humans cannot do that, by the way. It breathes using blowholes up on the top of its head. Sometimes, when it does come up for air, it breathes out a huge fountain of water from the blowholes. Blue whales are carnivores. They eat lots of food and to build up their blubber during the summer months when food is easy to find. Blue whales eat teeny tiny sea creatures called plankton, which is kind of funny that they eat something so small because they're so big. The plankton that blue whales eat are small shrimp-like shellfish that are the size of your little finger. Hold up your pinky. That's about the size they would be. It's incredible to think that the biggest animal on earth eats one of the smallest animals on earth. The ocean is so huge and deep that we could spend all year looking at the plants and animals that live there and still not see all of them. In fact, there are still many living things in the ocean that people and adventurous rats have not even discovered yet. I hope you enjoyed learning about the animals in the saltwater habitat and the Pacific Ocean. We still have one more stop to make on our wonderful worldwide tour of habitat, so I'll see you next time. everybody so now we're going to think about what do you remember from our lesson all right mr stefano am i asking the first question or are you asking the first question i'm asking the first question so oh, here okay. we go number one what makes a salt what or what makes a water habitat a salt water habitat well, um, the water would contain a lot of salt. Hey, Mr. Stefano, could you name the five oceans on Earth? I know we talked about there being five oceans. Could you name them? Um, there's the Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and the Southern Ocean. And are oceans freshwater or saltwater habitats? They are saltwater habitats. So Mrs. Kanda, how would you describe the ocean floor? Is it flat and level or does it go up and down? Well, it actually goes up and down or slopes just like the land outside of the oceans. It has mountains and even valleys. Mr. Stefano, what are some ways that animals have adapted to the saltwater habitat? Um, they have large mouths and sharp teeth to catch prey. 
They have feelers to find food in the dark. And some of them even have chemicals to make their own light. So Mrs. Conda, describe the types of animals that live in the salt water habitat called the Pacific Ocean. Well, all right, well, we have the starfish or the sea, st the sea star, and that's shaped like a star. We have a hammerhead shark, which its head is shaped like a hammer. Um, there's a lobster, which lives in the ocean floor. I think those are two big, or some big ones that I remember. So do the animals that we learned about in the Arctic Ocean like the walruses and polar bears, do they also live in the Pacific Ocean? No, they don't. Why not? Well, the climate and other conditions are very different. Hey, Mr. Stefano, what animal is this? That is a starfish. Wow. So starfish eat fish, snails, clams, oysters, and crabs. Is the starfish a carnivore, omnivore, or an herbivore? Well, let's see, you said they eat fish, snails, clams, oysters, and crabs. Those are all animals. I didn't read about any plants there. So it must be that they're a carnivore because carnivores only eat other animals. That's right. And you know, Mr. Stefano, did you hear that the starfish can regenerate? What, what does regeneration mean? It means it can regrow parts of its body. So if another animal comes up and um, bites off part of the starfish, it can grow um, like its arm, it can grow it back. Wow, what a handy adaptation. And Mrs. Kunda, what animal is this? Oh, Mr. Stefano, this is a lobster. So lobsters eat fish, worms, and other shellfish. Is the lobster a carnivore, an omnivore, or an herbivore? Well, you said that a lo the lobster eats fish, worms, and um, shellfish. Those are all animals. So I'm going to go with carnivore because uh, an animal that's a carnivore eats other animals. You're right, Mrs. Conda. Where does the lobster find shelter? Well, it, under and around rocks and in the coral reef. Mr. Stefano, what animal is this? That is a hammerhead shark. Now, the hammerhead shark likes to eat lobsters, crabs, fish, and other sharks. Is this animal a carnivore, omnivore, or an herbivore? Well, again, you said they ate lobsters, crabs, fish, and other sharks. Those are all animals. I don't see any, I didn't hear any plants in, those, in that list, so they would have to be carnivores. Well, we're hearing about a lot of carnivores. That sounds like there's a lot of carnivores in the ocean. <laughs> What animal is this, Mrs. Conda? Oh, this is the blue whale. Blue whales eat teeny tiny sharp shrimp, teeny tiny shrimp-like animals called plankton. Is the blue whale a carnivore, omnivore, or herbivore? Well, those plankton are little shrimp-like animals, and you know that seems to be a, a huge part of their diet. And those are other animals, so it must be that they are carnivores. That is correct. Do blue whales have gills to breathe underwater? No, they don't. Then how do they breathe? Well, they breathe through the blowholes on the top of their heads. All right, very good, Mrs. Kanda. Wow, we learned so much today about the ocean, um, about, about the saltwater um, habitat as well. So we would love to hear what you learned. So today's journal response, we want you to think about all of the things you learned and pick three. Pick your favorite three facts and tell us all about what you learned uh, about the saltwater habitat. We cannot yeah, wait to hear your responses. I was gonna say we learned about so many things it would be hard to pick just three. Yes, yeah, so feel free if you have learned more than three and you'd like to share, we are happy to read them. We cannot wait to see what you say. I mean, you know what, add a picture there too because you know how much Mrs. Kanda loves the oceans. I'd love to see your picture. All right, first grade, that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we miss you so much. Yeah, have a great day, first grade. Bye, first grade. Bye, first grade.